to a special episode of Neo Cash Radio. In the studio with you, it's JJ. In this special episode, I interview Gabriel Dussel, the co-founder and board member of Adele. Adele is a coin agnostic, community-based project funding platform planned as a child chain on the Ardor blockchain. The first round of their ICO was successful and issued the Adele Foy token. Gabriel, thank you for joining me. Welcome to the show. Yeah, it's great to be here. Let's just learn a bit about yourself first and uh, tell, tell our listeners about about you and how you got started in crypto and, and this project. Well, I was approached by a colleague of mine, Michael Vavrick, and he was the brainchild behind the Adele idea. Uh, that was back in February of 2016. So we've been working on this project for about 18 months now. Uh, before that, I was in internet security. I was doing some uh, ICT type services, internet co- uh, communication technologies, and and also then moved into some of the video streaming. But a lot of the, my background came into cloud-based services. So this uh, worked out very nicely in terms of uh, utilizing my cloud-based background and, and uh, service background in the blockchain space. It, there was a nice uh, seamless transition. And I'm... I, I'm one of the board members of the, the three gentlemen. The third one is Jan Lamser. He's a, a banker that came from the largest savings bank in the Czech Republic. So he has a lot of banking experience. And of the three guys, I'm the geek of the team. Nice. The technical so, Would you say that, is this based, is this team based out of a location or are you guys spread over the world? Well, the whole team is uh, global, so we're decentralized, like the blockchain is decentralized. But our team, in terms of the board members, are all based here in Prague, Prague Czech Republic. All right. So let's let's get into an overview of Adele. And, and just sort of, if you could explain it in sort of a boilerplate fashion of what is Adele, and then we'll get into detail from there. Right. So Adele is an incubator for blockchain innovation. And what we set out to do is to create a marriage between venture capital and social media and forums and that sort of thing and combine a community-based model in in incubating projects. So there's a lot invested in terms of what that means, but it's really a fine-tuned engine which combines people, process, and technology. So we saw a gap in the market uh, which there was a lot of venture capital aspects going on. There was ICOs, uh, initial coin offerings. There was also community-based uh, models in the blockchain space, but nobody was really marrying the two together. Right. So we, so, we, set, out, we set out to really uh, marriage, marry the two aspects of those uh, uh, together into a single platform. Okay, now let's now let's talk about that platform. Now you're you're operating as you're working with NXT and Ardor. To explain that a little bit for my listeners. Right. So we looked at, into the market, and one of our goals was to focus on the business aspect of blockchain. So we, you know we didn't have five years experience, or we didn't start in 2013 like a lot of people. Uh, we had a lot of business experience, and we wanted to enter the market utilizing blockchain technology without getting into reinventing the, the wheel, so to speak. So we we wanted to look at services in the blockchain space that could catapult us to where we wanted to start. And we found NXT because NXT was essentially a blockchain as a service or they are a blockchain as a service. So we realized that we didn't have to build a blockchain. We didn't have to build a coin from scratch. And uh, we could start uh, the, the or- architecture of our platform from the basis of knowing that we have a strong blockchain which has, which has strong security and a lot of features, and then really build from that standpoint uh, upwards. Okay. And now you're, you're planning on moving this to the Ardor uh, system, the Ardor platform, when that comes out. Is that true? Yeah, yeah, we're going to be moving to Ardor. We're talking to Jellarita, which are the de- developers behind Ardor. And that is planned for Q1 of 2018. Ardor is going to be activated currently at the moment in Q4 of this year. So we're going to be a quarter after that. And uh, we're going to be utilizing the latest features. We're going to be a child chain in Ardor. Okay, so, cool. Yeah. So Adele will be its own child chain. Will be a child chain. Yeah, that's right. Right. Okay. Excellent. Um, and so you're, 
the 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 whole i mean we could we could spend time on talking about ardor and how that's going to work out but i really think we focused in on adele here and so i was i mentioned before the show as we were talking that there are 11 different white papers describing what you're doing what your plans are and 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 various details and uh we'll have links to your website at the uh, on our blog post for our listeners to go and check those out but let's just go into the first one, the, the, the creation of the foundation uh, document here. And you right, right off the, the bat, you talk about uh, Adelphi. Is that, am I pronouncing it right? Uh, we, we call it Adelphoi. Foy, okay, excellent. I did not pronounce it right. So Adelphoi, is, is that your, your token then? Well, we are differentiating between token and coins. And right. in, the, in the context of what we're referring to, Adelphoi or ADL, which is our ticker, is a coin in, in, in purely a digital currency. Okay. All right. So is that, um, is that what your child chain is going to be using, that, that coin? Yeah, the child, chain, chain, the child chain will be using the Adelphoi uh, coin uh, as, a, as a ticker. So we'll be using uh, Ardor in that capacity. And at the moment, already ADL uh, will be uh, trading uh, has is already trading on the NXT platform, but we'll be migrating that to the Ardor platform. But at the same, also what we're doing is we're building out a new token, and this is will be a true token in the sense that we're talking about a token, and that is really uh, a token that will facilitate the activation and the execution of projects that we're going to be incubating, and we're working on the legal structure for that right now. So we haven't released that, and that's going to be called ADS, uh, the okay. be called AD, uh, an Adele share. Okay, so you you have this Adele deployment, and you have three phases here in in this document. Um, and starting out with phase one is the community, the ICO module, a community portal, and account module. Um, is that phase complete, or are you still working on that phase? Yeah, that phase one is complete. We did phase one up until the end of our ICO, which finished at the end of May. So phase okay. two, phase two began began on June first. So we needed to separate this into two phases uh, or three phases, uh, as you see in the document, mainly because we wanted to release the coin first in order to see what type of capital we could raise to run this company and then give us some time and some capital in order to, to create the legal structure for the second phase, which ultimately is the creation of this second token, uh, which is going to facilitate the, the projects uh, after they've been incubated. So we, we realized that you know, we, we couldn't really do everything at once. It was a chicken and eggs uh, dilemma, and we felt that it was best to take this in a phased approach so we can see how things pan out, especially since we're, we're KYC compliant and a lot of uh, obstacles we put in, in the way, which were very different from a lot of the other ICOs that were operated and are currently being operated today from a legal right. perspective. Yeah, there isn't a lot of KYC compliance with some of the... Uh, Modern ICOs. <laughs> uh, could you turn down your speaker a little bit? I'm getting a little feedback. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, <clears throat> all right, so let's talk about the let's let's quick get into that ICO and and talk about what what happened there, and we'll talk about phase two and three after that. So, you you had your your uh, your initial offering uh, in May. Yeah, we had the initial coin offering in in the May time frame. Uh, first of May to the end of May, and we raised uh, a million euros. Uh, and in the context of ICOs, it's let's say uh, quite small. You know, we have some ICOs that are generating uh, 12 million in, in 12 minutes and 30 million in 30 seconds, that sort of thing. Uh, but uh, we we felt it was a success because, as I mentioned, we're KYC compliant, we're AML compliant, we're CTF compliant, which is uh, counter terrorism financing compliant. And, um, and in that compliance, we realized we probably cut out 90 to 95% of the crypto market that want to remain anonymous. Um, right. So uh, we believe that we would have got to 10 million if we allowed um, anonymity in our platform. But, you know, so we think that the 1 million was quite a, a good number for us to reach. Excellent. Excellent. So now this was the, uh, the, the phase one, the first round of the coin offering. Is there, are there more rounds to come? Well, we have the ability to run two more rounds because we have 100 million Adelphoi coins that we can release to the markets, and we've released 33 million at the moment. Actually, 24 though 24 million are in circulation at, 
as we speak. Um, and we have the ability to run two more rounds in order to release the other uh, 66 million coins. And each of those rounds will be used to incubate projects, new projects that will come in uh, as a result of those uh, fundraising rounds. And, uh, and also create the seed capital in order to fund uh, those projects. So uh, we're not even looking at the second phase right now. We really want to launch the first phase uh, or, or, you know, or get into and, and solidify the second phase that we're in right now and get everything in place. And then once we have some the momentum of the project uh, incubation and the modules that we want to create, then we're going to start looking at the second phase, uh, which will probably be at the end of next year. You know, we don't even know yet when that will happen. Okay. okay. So, so what, what you're, you're talking about incubating projects and things like that. What sort of projects would you be focused on? Or, or you have a, a KYC AML sort of uh, capability here, which sort of opens you up to a whole slew of projects that aren't going to find that in a lot of other tokens and chains. So what's what's sort of like the focus of we want to incubate these type of projects? We're really looking to get that, you know, what's what's that sort of like? Yeah, well, that actually is a good question because the KYC compliance applies not only to Adele, but also applies to every project that we run. And we realize that if we're just looking at the coin, the Adelphoi coin, then we really didn't need KYC compliance from, from uh, releasing a coin. Uh, from I mean, we, we could argue that point, but we established a, an entity in the Isle of Man, and that required us to do a KYC compliance. But we, we would have gone through KYC compliance anyway because we need that uh, identification for uh, creating a community that will eventually have some sort of stake, we're not exactly sure the, the, the legal form of that stake, but they'll have some sort of stake in these projects moving forward um, as, the, as these projects start to grow and, and become successful. So uh, okay. that's, that's really the foundation. And uh, once we create that foundation, once we, since we have created that foundation, then the world is our oyster. You know, you were looking at tens of thousands of uh, blockchain projects out there and proof of concepts, and there's, there's over 10,000 uh, development initiatives on GitHub alone. So, you know, we're looking at fintech, we're looking at healthcare, we're looking at Internet of Things, uh, government, e-government type applications, we're looking at uh, the ICT, information communication technology. Really, the, the world is our oyster in terms of what type of projects we can incubate. And we believe that it, if we can start to have a lot of projects, then it's really about diversifying that portfolio so that we have some balance in terms of risk uh, for, for the members that are, are having a stake in those projects. So, so this is sort of, uh, in a way, it, it really reminds me of the DAO, uh, that sort of um, community surrounding, community incubating sort of project uh, building situation. Is, would that be right to say that? Well, we are similar to the DAO in the sense that, you know, it's community-based and the community is, has a vested interest in, in incubating uh, projects. But what we see is the DAO is more focused on the execution side. Uh, we, what our focus is, uh, is really in the process, right okay. from incubation all the way to execution. And what we've referred to those are three stages. One is called idea incubation, which is I2. Uh, the second stage is project planning, which is P2. And then the third stage is enterprise execution, which is E2. And the I2 initiative, the idea incubation is about creating the marketing document in a, in a wiki process uh, together with the community members. So that's one of the things that we're doing right now is creating a collaboration module, which is building out this wiki process so that we can collaborate and, and collectively bring the intelligence of the uh, members together to incubate this idea into a marketing document, uh, typically around three to four pages long. And then we would move that project uh, and the popular projects, because we're looking at having you know, tens, if not you know, potentially hundreds of projects in the future. We, we look at the popularity of that incubation and the, those that, that rise to the top of that popularity in, in various different metrics, in, let's say in terms of, of how, much, how many people are actually involved in that incubation process in terms of time and typing letters and so on, uh, would then move to the business planning uh, process, which is the project planning, P2. 
And then we go through the whole wiki process again. And that in, in itself is, is, a, is a wiki process and a collaborative process within the team. Uh, and the members, uh, only, only members can participate in that. And then when we get to a certain stage of the business plan, we decide, okay, now it's, it's probably ready for a vote. And it doesn't have to be 100% ready uh, in terms of a project plan, but you know, it could be 80% or whatever. And so we go for a vote and then the community decides on whether they want to proceed uh, with the execution of that plan. And once we move to the execution stage, then we start to fund it through the community. And uh, through that funding, uh, we then executed like any other business. Okay. okay. It, it makes a lot of sense. A lot of these projects coming on board, they don't have a lot of business and marketing smarts that you should really want to have in order to sell your project to potential investors and so on. So, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely a need. There's a need out there. As you said, you, you saw a, a sort of gap in the market. And uh, so this sort of uh, service is definitely something that a lot of these projects are going to be looking for. And I think they're right now, it seems like, and maybe this is, this is my view of it and you can give me your feedback, but it seems now that a lot of these startup ideas and projects, they're reaching out to PR companies and more traditional, or maybe they just got into crypto PR and it's not really doing them a good service in helping them because the, the PR isn't, I mean, the PR is only really caring about writing that press release, not so much, uh, coming up with a concrete plan and idea for how to make this project actually succeed. Uh, what, what are your thoughts? Well, I mean, you're you're right on target. That that's the reason why we have eleven white papers instead of one. You know, we have we have six uh, presentations on our site, and 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 there'll be more. Uh, there's six. Uh, there's four uh, motion graphic videos. Uh, there's twenty five page FAQ. You know, we're, we're, every week we're talking about how we're developing the platform. And we're very serious about what we want to do. We have a lot of passion. We have a lot of uh, belief in the vision uh, that we're trying to create here. And, and we also s differentiate ourselves coming back to the DAO uh, aspect is that, it, this, you know, this is not a free for all in terms of uh, project incubation. Um, so there are some aspects uh, which are quite unique and in, 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 the in, in the way that we don't want to incubate any illegal projects, immoral projects, and unethical projects. Okay. So part of the aspect of our philosophy, uh, and we actually have a philosophy white paper, one of them is, is, a, is a philosophy white paper, is to go through a filter mechanism uh, which filters through, uh, through this aspect of making sure that there is a legal basis and a moral and ethical basis to, to the projects, each and every project that we incubate. And we believe that's important because, you know, we don't want to uh, repeat the Silk Road scandal of a, of a couple of years ago. We don't want to taint the, the blockchain as, as a concept uh, any further than, than maybe the public sees already. Uh, we don't want to taint the, the Adele brand. And we want to protect the, the stakeholders and the members and the staff. So we really want to work above the board here and... Uh, so for those that say, well, you're not a DAO because you're not completely decentralized uh, in that aspect and you're filtering, well, we, we're the first to admit that, that that's the case. You know, we, we have a certain uh, moral obligation, we believe, to incubate good projects. And that's why we call ourselves a centralized slash decentralized model. Uh, and we believe that there's a lot of justification of why we're doing it this way. And those that are buying into the platform uh, that are identifying themselves through the KYC process also are buying into that that ideology. So, so we believe it's important. Yeah, yeah. and it, the uh, yeah. the DAO, the problem it, it really stems from the the free as you mentioned the free for all aspect. But I don't think that any of these businesses that, that can that you can't really come up with an idea and then give it to the internet and say the internet run this this DAO and execute it like I would run it because I came up with this idea. I don't think you know that's. The, the DAO can't happen, I don't think, in a real, real honest sense. It can't happen until the project is running, until there are people in position that believe in the idea, that are seeing it through, and then it can look at becoming some sort of DAO. I don't think any of these projects that claim to be a DAO are actually a DAO at this point in time. Um, but I think what you have going, the KYC AML aspect, I think there are a lot of traditional businesses 
that are looking at the blockchain space, but they have all their regulations and, and they have all these assets and, and uh, property and, and all kinds of things that they have that they don't want to lose to some sort of legal, uh, you know, snafu. Um, so it seems like do you do you have prospects right now of, of uh, potential projects you're going to incubate? Well, let me let me back up and say you know you, you hit the nail on the head uh, in terms of the, how, another differentiation of the DAO. Uh, you know, a lot of people have great ideas, but uh, I think it was Thomas Edison that said that it's ninety is one percent is idea and ninety nine percent is sweat. And that's really what it's all about. It's, it's, it's all about the implementation. And we really want to make sure that there's a combination of people processing technology in order to create uh, this incubation process to business planning. Because a lot of these companies that are being developed in the DAO process, we see that it's going right from idea to execution. And there's no business plan. And, uh, and you know, the history has shown that a lot of businesses just fail because there's no business plan. And you start to make mistakes that really could have been solved in a business plan. Uh, right. And and you have uh, people that are that are uh, working in a DAO that say you know I don't have the resources to create a business plan so so you know uh, here's my idea um, and see what happens whereas in a DAO uh, there's going to be legal uh, experts uh, accounting experts and uh, you know fiduciary. Uh, marketing, sales, operation ex expertise, and we have multiple layers of expertise. Not only are we looking at that expertise at the, at the community level with the members, but we're also going to have a project review committee, which will have in itself uh, those experts uh, that are going to oversee the idea incubation in the, in the project planning process. So, you know, we really ha have create, uh, created a very nice process that we need to execute on and create uh, this uh, collaboration module in order to to really get it off the ground. Um, so coming back to your question, uh, do we have a pipeline? We, we have around 25 projects right now that could potentially be incubated. Uh, we need to look at, at which ones are viable. We need to look at uh, which ones will actually become part of the incubation process, the I2 process. But there are 25 ideas that have come in. We've, we've submitted about uh, 12 of them. Um, uh, in, into our system. Uh, we have another 12 or so from the community um, and we're building out the collaboration module that uh, to present these ideas to the community, which we haven't done yet. So we're, we're doing idea incubation in a, in a micro cosmos. Uh, so we've, we've, we're working with some high level uh, community members that are really keen on, on working with us. So we've exposed uh, some of the projects with them. We have an excellent project that we're going to be announcing quite shortly in terms of incubation, which is really going to kickstart what we're up to. It's going to be a fintech project that uh, our R&D uh, team came up with. Um, and what's going to be interesting is that just because an idea is not good uh, doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be shelved. Because we're going to have really a 60, uh, 30,000 foot view of idea incubation, we'll be able to see, say, well, you know, this project wasn't a great idea six months ago, but let's combine it with this other idea. With, and if we can got, combine the two, then maybe we can have even a better idea. So that type of holistic view of ideas and combining them to make them even better then uh, really starts to change the game in terms of how this process is going to play out. And also, we also look at it from a time perspective. You know, it may take us four months to get the first business plan together, but we want to cookie cut this whole business planning process and, and have a community that's are going to be experts in terms of business planning. So it may take us four months the first time, three months the second time, maybe after 10 times we'll be doing business plans in one month. So we really see that, uh, that there, we're going to have a community uh, that are going to become experts in business planning over time. Excellent. I, I think it is, it, you're definitely filling in a niche that uh, needs, needs some scratching. So, uh, one last thing in your website here, you, you have a, a bunch of supported blockchains, and of course, there's the NXT and Ardor. Um, but you have like Ethereum, uh, Lisk, um, NEM, and some others in Waves. Um, how? How are you integrating or, or supporting or working with these blockchains? Is there sort of, uh, is this just uh, like working with them or are you trying to like integrate these blockchains into your platform as well? Well, the first thing to mention, uh, uh, JJ, is that we 
are vendor agnostic from a blockchain perspective. So we're, we're blockchain agnostic. Uh, the NXT team are quite aware of that. From the beginning, uh, we mentioned to them that we wanted to be NXT, what we wanted to be blockchain agnostic. Uh, and that we were using the NXT blockchain, blockchain because they were the best blockchain as a service uh, and they still are. Um, but for projects, the projects can be on any blockchain. Sure. And in fact, the first project that we going, are going to be announcing it are, is going to be on the Ethereum platform. Okay. Uh, uh, because we want to use the smart contracts aspect of, of the Ethereum platform. Uh, which is not, you know, a big focus on, on the NXT platform. So the first project will be Ethereum-based, so that's kind of a little bit of a, uh, a, a an entry into what we will be announcing, and I can't really talk about what we'll be announcing yet, but, but you know, it can be Byteball, it can be NEM, it can be Waves, uh, Stratus, uh, and we are open to any of those blockchains, and, you know, that, that technical technological layer that sits uh, below Adele or below all the projects uh, can ride on on any blockchain. So we want to. The first step is really to communicate to the market that we are blockchain agnostic, and uh, how we institutionalize that uh, as we incubate projects is. We'll we'll see how how that plays out. How we build out uh, partnerships, maybe formalized partnerships. Uh, maybe some of the blockchains will start to come to us. Uh, and we can have much more of a structured agreement, but it's still early to tell. Well, I think what you mentioned earlier uh, was the the whole changing ideas and, and looking at the ideas now and then revisiting them later or adding together ideas. I think that is, is a big important factor going on with the, the current and future development is not only looking at combining ideas and that you don't need just this token to do this one thing and this this. You, you can combine with other things, but also using existing platforms to do do the jobs that uh, you don't want to, you know, reinvent the wheel. Like you you talked about going to NXT because you didn't have to build your own blockchain. But I see that in, in the project space that as some of these other established ideas actually start to work, that partnerships and collaborations between uh, the various blockchains and tokens and coins are going to be the next the next big thing, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And... Uh, maybe there's a blockchain that has a f uh, fabulous uh, feature that that uh, the innovator of the idea wants to showcase and say, look, you know, this is a great feature on this blockchain, so we want to use that blockchain for for this uh, this incubation process. And absolutely, we can, we can proceed proceed down that route. Ultimately, it's the the members that decide whether those projects will move to the execution stage. So ultimately, uh, the members decide whether they're happy with that approach, and and maybe it, it could be uh, a combination of blockchain uh, solutions. So we really want to have that uh, optional. Um, the other thing to mention is that, you know, we we really don't see um, the this kind of uh, us and them scenario in, in the blockchain space. You know, the, you have a lot of blockchain proponents that you know they're they're heavy on the on uh, Ethereum. You have uh, very strong supporters of NXT and Waves and so on. So this sometimes becomes like you know we're NXT and we're not going to talk to you guys. We're, we're Waves and we're not going to talk to you guys. Uh, uh, we 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 see that. There, we have a, a responsibility to showcase blockchain on a world stage, right? So we in Adele, we see all these blockchains uh, that we're all friends, you know? We're all friends trying to uh, raise the profile of blockchain and uh, to bring projects to the world uh, that will change the world in a positive way. And uh, and we want to participate in that. So that's why we're, we're looking at all these different blockchains as more of a of a collaborative friendly environment rather than saying you know you know you're not the blockchain uh, that's on our side of the river so we're not going to talk to you guys you know we we don't um, take that stance right and I, I think i agree completely with that uh, you know being blockchain agnostic it's it's a whole bunch of experiments be conducted and and it's, sure they're all very similar experiments but they all have their own take on how to conduct this experiment and you know what uh, I, I think mankind is just benefiting from all of these these lab trials going on right now. So, good times. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Where can people go to find out more about what you have going on? So we're on uh, adelfoy.io. So a, so that's adl. Um, sorry, adel is a d e l p h 
o o i dot i o, and uh, that's our website. At the bottom of the website, there are several social media connections to our Slack channel, to Bitcoin Talk, to the uh, to the NXT forum, and several other areas like Twitter, Facebook, and uh, LinkedIn. So we're on. We we broadcast our announcements on all of them. Uh, but you can connect to us on Slack, and we can talk to you directly. And uh, our email is Adele at adelefoy.io. So you can email us if you want to ch chat that way as well. So there's there's various different ways to contact us. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Gabriel. No problem. Thanks a lot, JJ, for your time. You're listening to Neo Cash Radio. Tune in to neocashradio.com every Wednesday for a new show. Mm -hmm.